So we had all 44 players and referees took the knee in support of Black Lives Matter yesterday evening before kick-off at the start of the first two Premier League matches since lockdown. The move sparked further controversy as all players had Black Lives Matter on the back of their shirts rather than their own names. Although the move has been welcomed by some, it's drawn criticism from others for politicising football. The law set out by FIFA states that kits must not have any political, religious or personal slogans, statements or images on them, of course. As we alluded to, FIFA would be more of an international proclamation. Um, so why will Black Lives Matter any different? Has football officially become then political? Tom Slater, deputy editor of Spiked Online. Afternoon to you, Tom. Well, broadly, what are you making of it, what we saw last night? 44 players and referees all on the knee, all with Black Lives Matter on their shirts. I think it was a pretty strange spectacle. And I think football needs to be very careful about just kind of ushering in the culture war into sport. I mean, this is something that we've seen in the US in recent years from 2016 when the um, San Francisco 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick was famously taking the knee. Now, him as an, any individual player, they want to make some kind of small statement. I'm quite relaxed about it. But I think to, when it comes to the point where it seems to overtake the entire sport, become quite a conformist thing, it kind of just rubs people up the wrong way and I think can inject a lot of tension into an area of life which should be kind of free of politics more or less. And I think the distinction we've got to make, and you've already gestured to it, is that there's a big difference between believing that black lives matter, which the vast, vast majority of people do, and the organisation and the movement Black Lives Matter, which is not just about straightforward anti-racism, comes with a lot of baggage. And if you're in a situation where that message is just being asserted as unequivocally good, it's going to irritate some fans. I bet it's going to irritate some players as well. But at the same time, they're going to feel increasingly unable to even voice that opposition. I just think introducing all of this tension is not really a good idea. Yeah, I mean, we've had sort of similar uh, gestures or political gestures before. Uh, the city manager in 2018 fined 20,000 quid for wearing yellow for his support for the Cat uh, for Catalan independence. Robert F uh, Robbie Fowler was found um, back in the 90s, 900 quid for revealing an undershirt displaying support for striking Liverpool dock workers. So we've been there. Uh, Uber Trika, the, uh, the Egyptian midfielder, fined for lifting his shirt, support for Gaza on there. Um, so, I mean, what make, what, why has Black Lives Matter found itself given a green light on this one, do you suppose, Tom? Well, I think the first thing to say about it is the fact that um, there is this conflation going on between the literal message of that organisation <laughs> and the organisation itself. You know, it's one of the things that um, is quite savvy about it. You know, who could disagree with the main claim? But at the same time, Broadly speaking, as a movement in this country, it's become associated with this campaign against statues, you know, the campaign to kind of decolonize curriculums and a, a kind of particular view on race relations, which I think is overly pessimistic and often quite extreme. That's really what the movement is generally associated with. So on one level, you can understand people kind of take it quite literally, feeling like this is an entirely uncontroversial thing to ally ourselves with. But I think the other thing is that there is just this very strong climate of conformism at the moment in which you have every institution, whether it's Oriel College at Oxford, whether it's, part, whether it's um, again, the Premier League, or whether it's all of these mm. big businesses who are currently making these statements, they feel they have to do something. They feel they do have to kind of make some kind of capitulation to this movement because the feeling is so strong but the only thing I would say is they need to kind of recognise what this movement actually is because part of it is positive and is anti-racist part of it isn't and is quite negative quite identitarian, quite censorious so I think they kind of have benefited off of that level of conformism but also you know, the fact that there is this mm. conflation between their message and actually their organisation it, it, One of the issues of course I mean in, in PR terms if you want to look at it that way um, you know, Black Lives Matter has about the best name you could have because it's something that nobody mm. can <laughs> seriously disagree with. I mean, it's, it's like if you ask people, do you, do you care about little babies? Yes. Do you care about, you know, old people and their heart conditions? Yeah, of course we do. We care about all of these things. There's, there's no way you can answer in the negative to something like that. But I, I, I sense, Tom, that... I mean, if you were to stop quite a lot of those protesters of whatever colour skin they might be on those marches we've had uh, over the last couple of weeks and ask them whether they're aware of what the, the actual Black mm. Lives Matter movement, as per their website, the doctrine, their uh, philosophy, what it means. I, I'm pretty sure most people wouldn't know what that meant. So it's almost as if Black Lives Matter has taken on uh, almost a, a duality here. You've got that organisation in the States and you've got kids marching saying, we're just marching for equality. Totally unaware, but it's all got the same name, which has con created confusion. You know, we're, we're almost at the stage where the Queen is about to get on one knee over this.
<laughs> Completely. And I, I think that's part of the thing. Because on the one hand, Black Lives Matter is a slogan more than it is an organisation. It's just become the kind of broad banner under which loads of different people with loads of different perspectives, but all united under um, a concern about racism have united. But as you say, the, I think the organisation in particular is trying to benefit off of that. They're trying to suggest there, that there is mass support for some of their more, shall we say, uh, niche political ideas, like wanting to abolish the nuclear family. There is no mass support for that. It's also yeah. a nominally anti-capitalist movement. Now, some people agree with that, some people won't. But certainly, the you know, the ranks of top flight footballers are not necessarily going to be down with some of those policies. So I think that's one thing which we really need to make clear is that the organisation itself is a very particular, in some respects, quite strange set of politics. The fact that its message has been so effective is why it's caught on so much. But again, what I think will start to irritate people is that there's this kind of assumption that we all have to get on board with all of it or that we're getting on board with all of it by taking to that slogan, which I don't think is the case. Good work. Tom, thank you. Tom Slater, Deputy Editor at Spiked Online with us here on Talk Radio.